Okay, Jay, we're back here at the 2010 United States Snooker Championship at the Embassy Club, uh, Embassy Billiards in San Gabriel. Ooh, had a collision, he might get lucky here. Yeah, he wasn't a, yeah. a particularly good uh, breakout shot. He's left so, Ife an opportunity here. Yeah. Uh, he can actually, you know, pot the bottom right hand red, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, you know, play a play a stun shot with a little bit of uh, running side and and g get behind the black or mm -hmm. come around the black. You know, well, towards be the blue in the box. See how we respond to that last game because now the match is tied. We're at two two. Again, it's the best of nine, and uh, we'll see what happens there. It was interesting if you get, you know could go back and look at that stroke when he missed. You could see his stroke coming off an angle and going back at a sideways motion. He came across the ball and swiped the cue ball. I think if anybody wants to work on their game, having access to videotape of yourself is so crucial in any sport, let alone this. You know. That's correct. Let's look at his technique and see. Crit critique his technique with the rake here. Yeah, he's uh, he's got quite a decent uh, technique. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, he holds his cue, uh, you know, with with two fingers across his cue yeah, and two loose. two uh, yeah. two below. Uh, that's it, it's quite traditional to, okay. to hold it that uh -huh. way. Again, he didn't play it hard enough. Unless mm -hmm. the pink goes, uh, it's tough to tell from here. No, so he, he actually wanted to play it hard enough to be on the other side of uh, mm -hmm. the blue to get back to the reds. Oh boy, I'm not going to work out. Seems to me you can see that red that's on the far right. And you can almost, well he's going to shoot this one here and squeeze it in it looks like. And, and of course that's another skill that you really want to work on. Uh, is playing with your opposite hand. I think uh, Ali might have been distracted by somebody there. Ife has a tough... Uh, oh, he's not even attempting the pot. I think he's just going to play safety. Try to get behind the green here. I almost leaked that last red there, but yeah, that's a good shot. It's a fantastic shot. I think, mm -hmm. again, Ali has... Uh, it was a fantastic selection, you know. I really picked out, I mean, this is what was interesting to me. And, you know, I watch, you know, I, I think when I watch you play, you really manage the, the pack good. And uh, you know, played safety, safety, good, terrific safeties, and you can really reverse the game that way. Yeah, you really need to think about uh, about safety as well. It's it's an integral part of the game. Yeah. Um, because most opportunities are created by good safety play. Mm -hmm. He's, I, I think he's given Ife a half an opportunity. Um, the black's not available, obviously, to the left hand. No. Side, so he needs to draw the white ball back to the blue, um, which makes it a tough shot. But uh. yeah, and I think sometimes it's deceptive for people looking at these pockets from the front. They look very open, but the but the the shelf of the pocket can be very deep. And if a ball touches the rail, it's not that easy to make them. That's right. Yeah, these pockets are very tight. And the ball being small like that, if you have a tendency to miss it the cue ball at all, it's really amplified on that ball. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. That's why accuracy is... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, one can't really stress how important technique is. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure Tony, as a, as a pool player, you know that 
um, you know, any flaws in technique gets amplified in snooker, like you were saying. Well, as a, pr a person that's had to take long hiatuses from playing competitively, I've just felt like the only way that I could stay competitive was to keep trying to improve my technique, and I continue to do so. Some days I feel like I, I have, and other days uh, I think I've regressed, but this guy's technique's out of sight, I can tell you. He might have gotten lucky in it. Well, you know, in that shot there, I think he kind of calculated that there was a calculated risk in going that way. Right. But it wasn't as great as doing any, something else. So yeah, I would have actually imagined that yeah. that being behind this red here mm -hmm. was the... Did was he have an surface. angle to do that? Yes. So what he could have played was he could have he could have played across two cushions and behind the, uh, the red there, but... You know, if you look at that attempt that Ali just made, that was really half-hearted. He, he didn't have his deliberate set up there. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure in this match. These guys have played all year for a chance to go to the... Now, when they win this tournament, they're in the... Yes, they... It's uh, just a top the, player the, or... The, the top two get oh, the to top play, two. Okay, yeah. play in the World Championships, which is really prestigious. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if they happen to do good in the Amateur World Championships, that gives them a berth in the World Champion... in the World Snooker Association tournament, or...? So if you win the IBSF World yes. Championships, you get an automatic uh, uh, entry into the World Professional Championships. There you go. That's so, or or yeah. you actually can get to play uh, as a professional. And how many players played in the IBSF Championship this last year? I think there were 54 countries that played in the last one. Okay. And uh, they were all entitled the, to send two players? Uh, that's correct. And the host country typically gets uh, more than two players. Uh, okay. It depends yeah. on, on the total number of entries. And uh, they play the men's, the ladies, and the masters. Mm -hmm. uh, the masters, which is over 40, uh, they mm -hmm. play uh, all of them uh, you know, typically at the same time. What a shot! Snuck That's it a in. fantastic shot. Now, if if the uh, the red's covering the blue spot, mm -hmm. uh, he might decide to play the brown and and uh, play for that red by the blue spot. Watch that oh, side. he's very close to the side oh, pocket. Man, he's extremely lucky. Well, you know it's interesting because. You would consider him fairly unlucky if it went in, and you consider him fairly lucky because it didn't go didn't in. Go so in. That's right. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and and also the fact that uh, he was that close to the pocket, mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have a very good angle on this red. I saw that. Uh, That's the thing that's he's yeah. paying a penalty for. But this is where I like playing off the blue in the corner. I think the ab the ability to pot, pot the blue in the corner can get, you know, various corners can, and if, uh, using that as a strategy, can get you out of a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, in fact, um, you know, the professionals play, uh, you know, blue to the corners, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for hours on end. Yeah, he's played a fantastic shot to mm -hmm. get back to, uh, to where the action is. He's really in good shape here now. He's got lots of scoring opportunities. Yes, yeah, he he, he has the game now. Um, oh. oh man, I think he played that breakout really prematurely there. Yeah, he. Uh, you wouldn't have expected him yeah. to miss that shot. That was a big opportunity to like get away there. <laughs> 